this week I've been sent a new blood pressure monitor to review. It's called an Actea with an upside down eye. And unlike other blood pressure monitors on the market, this thing dispenses with the cuff you usually have to use and replaces it with a bracelet that takes readings throughout the day. Now for someone like me who has the blood pressure of a small geezer, by which I mean one of these, and not one of these, this really could be revolutionary. Let's find out. And by the way, if you tire of my preamble, you can always skip through to the main review using the chapters below. God, I hate getting old. First, I started having to use reading glasses. Then my short-term memory went, so I can't remember where the bloody hell I put the things. Then my hearing went, so I can no longer hear my wife shout, they're on your head. Then my blood pressure started going up. Now I'm not sure whether that had anything to do with how much I drink, but as it happens, my prostate decided that was the moment to grow to the size of a garlic melon, which means I can't drink beer anymore or not without connecting myself to a hosepipe and running it to the nearest drain. Now, despite my reduced alcohol consumption and giving up smoking, my blood pressure keeps on climbing. So finally, a couple of months ago, when it started hitting the sort of 150s over 90s, my doc put me on some pill called amlodipine, which I've been taking regularly ever since. Or rather, I've been taking it when I remember and when I have my reading glasses with me and don't accidentally knock back a double dose of the prostate pills instead. Actually, I think one of the reasons my blood pressure has crept up is that I've put on weight. For every kilo you put on, they say your blood pressure can go up by about a millimetre of mercury. And over the last year, I've gone from a little bit bulky to a right old fatso except I'm not allowed to call myself fat, obese or overweight anymore, or I might offend myself. I have to call myself larger bodied. Now the problem with weight gain is that it happens so slowly that you don't notice it. I mean, if you woke up after a particularly good dinner looking all James Corden, I bet you'd ease off breakfast the next day. But it doesn't work like that. Only people who haven't seen you for about six months can tell how fat you've become. And they don't often say anything, except perhaps, ooh, you're looking well. Losing weight is equally challenging for the same reason. It's difficult for anyone who sees you all the time, and that includes you, to see any difference until you've been at it for months. So the only way to lose weight is scientifically, to eat less calories than you burn each day. I tried doing that with a product called Huel a few years ago. It's a nutritionally complete powdered food that makes it easy to control your calorie intake. The problem was that my wife was emphatic that our two young children needed chocolate puddings and biscuits and cake, and despite her best attempts to hide them, it's really a bit like trying to hide heroin from a smack addict. No chance. By six in the evening, I was so hungry I would have fought my way past a marauding pride of lions to get at the cookie jar. So here we are. At 95 kilos, I'm about 10 kilos overweight. Seems like a good time to go back on a diet. Now for this test, I'm going to eat 1,000 calories a day for 10 weeks. And at the end of that, we'll see where I would have come in a competitive dieting race against Nigel Lawson, Gordon Brown and Tom Watson. Stiff competition. And we'll also see what effect it has on my blood pressure. But first, let's see what this new Actea blood pressure monitor records today and tomorrow and how the readings compare with the Withings. First of all, I'm going to take a reading with the Withings cuff. Now, as the cuff inflates, it squeezes your blood vessels and that causes the blood flow to become turbulent and make a noise called a Korotkov sound, named after the Russian doctor who discovered the phenomenon, Dr. Nikolai Korotkov. And for me, there's a family link in all of this because Korotkov was a direct contemporary of another Russian doctor, Eugene Botkin, 
who was the family physician to Tsar Nicholas II and was executed with him. And Bokken's elder brother Peter was married to my mum's great-grandfather's sister. I know, a bit tenuous, but as far as I was concerned, that used to make him Cousin Botkin. Unless I'd had a couple of drinks when he became Uncle Botkin. Till the Ukraine war, that is. Since when, he's been demoted to Eugene who? Now, you shouldn't actually talk while taking your blood pressure, so here is one I took a little earlier. And disappointingly, at 148 over 90, it's not much better than it was before I went on the pills. So now, let's try out the new Actea blood pressure monitor. Now, in the box, well actually you get two boxes, and the first one is a bracelet that you have to put on your wrist about a centimetre or two up from your wrist bone. The bracelet uses optical blood pressure monitoring to analyse photoplethysmic... 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 Oh, sod it! An easier to pronounce explanation is that it shines a light into your wrist and records what's reflected back. The recorded reflection is then processed with Actea's specially developed algorithm to calculate your blood pressure. But first, you have to calibrate the bracelet by taking a blood pressure reading with the traditional cuff that's supplied with the bracelet. And here it is. Now again, it's not ideal to take your blood pressure in the middle of filming a review. So I did it a little bit earlier, and it came up with a slightly higher reading of 150 over 97. Yikes! I'm a walking time bomb! It's going to be a bloody miracle if I make it to the end of this film! Now once you've calibrated the bracelet, you can take the cuff off, and the bracelet will then take readings throughout the day when it senses you're not moving. We'll see how the readings look over the next couple of days, and in the meantime, I've stocked up with... Fuel, so I can crack on with that diet now. That should be a little bit easier than before because my children are away from home and there's not much left in the fridge except a little bit of rabbit food. Still, I'm dreading this. Before I go though, I'd better get some snapshots so we have something to compare before and after. We've already got the full frontal, but here's a side view of my growing collection of chins. And here's a shot of my unborn child. That's about three months. Well, here we go. It's night one of 70. And I'm going to kick off with a couple of scoops of tomato and herb. Oop. Now, at least one thing that can be said about the Huel diet is it does make it much quicker to make supper. There we go. That's supper all made. Ooh, I know it doesn't look that appetizing, but actually it does taste rather better than it looks. So for the next 10 weeks, I've got uh, tomato and herb, sweet and sour, spaghetti carbonara, uh, what's that? Mac and cheese, uh, vanilla, cinnamon swirl, and chicken and mushroom. And we'll see what I look like by the end of all of that. Well, it's day three, and I've already lost a kilo. But I have a nasty feeling that's going to be the easiest one. I mean, I could lose a kilo just having a good crap in the morning. I think the other nine kilos might just prove a little bit more stubborn. Well, it's now day 25 of monitoring my blood pressure with the Actea bracelet whilst eating no more than a thousand calories of Huel each day. And the first thing to say is that there really isn't very much to say at all about the Actea system. It just gets on and does what it's supposed to do silently, unintrusively and reliably. Pairing with the app and calibrating the bracelet was a doddle. And thereafter, you just open the app and pull down on the graph to get your latest readings. There's a graph of the day's readings, 
So you can see what a blazing argument with your wife does to your blood pressure. Then there's a view of the week's readings, which will give you a better idea of your blood pressure at your stage in life. Then there's a month view where you can start to see the effect of lifestyle changes on your blood pressure. And that's where this thing gets really interesting, especially if you're a fuller bodied, hypertensive, middle aged man like me. Now I have to admit, I have eaten normal food twice so far when I went for some supper with friends. I just couldn't bring myself to sit there drinking Huel whilst everyone else tucked into a nice leg of lamb and a glass of red. Still, I'm about three kilos down with seven to go. Now I wouldn't say there's been any noticeable change to my physique. I've still got three chins and I still look about three months pregnant. But something else rather remarkable has happened. According to the Actea app, my blood pressure seems to be dropping. Look, on my first full day of testing, it was running at 145 over 92, with a high of 153 over 96. But in week two, it had dropped a little bit to 144 over 92. And then in week three, it was down a little bit more to 143 over 91. OK, it's still nothing to get too excited about. After all, the readings are all still displayed in a rather fetching stage one hypertension red. But then in week four, on the 15th, my blood pressure dropped to an average of 139 over 89, which is no longer hypertension, it's just elevated. What's more, whilst I was sleeping, my blood pressure went into the green. Look, twice, two green dots. And the bigger picture is even more exciting. I mean, look at the month view. Call me a statistician, but that looks very much like a trend to me. And if I keep this up, I think I should be able to get my blood pressure back down to the 130s over 80s, which might even mean I can throw away the pills. And I tell you what, I'm finding that watching my blood pressure on this app is proving hugely motivational to stick with the diet. Now, it's all very well and good getting excited about my blood pressure falling to that of a sedated tortoise, but how accurate is the idea? Well, the thing is, even measuring blood pressure with a traditional cuff is not an exact science. If you put it on too tight, or too loose, or misplace it, or sit incorrectly, or cross your legs, or drink coffee, or snort cocaine, or talk, or have sex while you're taking the reading, the measurement can be out by 20 to 30 millimetres, which is an awful lot. And that's not to mention white coat syndrome, where just the sight of a stethoscope puts some people straight into stage 2 hypertension. Still, Actea says that in a trial, its system was found to measure blood pressure with a similar degree of accuracy as cuff systems made by Omron and Withings. Now, it's hard for me to do a direct comparison because you never know quite when the Actea is going to take a measurement, and there can be variations in readings taken just minutes apart. Still, when I took the initial reading, they were both at about 150 over 90 something, and now they're both showing late 130s systolic and the diastolic starting to drop into the 80s. So it would appear that my downward blood pressure trend is being picked up by both devices. So here we are. After three weeks, I've moved from stage one hypertension down to just high blood pressure. Now, it's difficult to know what has been the most important factor in that. Is it the calorie controlled diet and the fact that I've lost three kilos, or because I'm not eating as much salt, or because I'm mainly drinking decaf coffee, or perhaps because I was under quite a lot of stress when I started making this film? Family stuff, which has now eased off. If it's mainly the weight loss, and I think it might be, then in another couple of months or so, when I've lost the other seven kilos, I should be well into the green. So tune in then and I'll let you know how I got on. Meantime, if you know any fat, hypertensive, middle-aged men, you really should share this with them. It might just give them a few more years of life. Otherwise, till the next time, I've been Arlo Guthrie. Bye-bye.